Now, local news that matters. This is CBS 17 News. Rocky Mount police are investigating an accidental shooting that hurt a four-year-old girl. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Maggie Newland. And I'm Nick Sturdivant. Officers tell us the child was at a home on Humphrey Drive around midnight. Her mother took her to the hospital with a gunshot wound to the foot. Police believe the incident involved a family member. No word on whether charges will be filed. Zebulon police announced additional officers will be on duty at area schools next week after a man is accused of making a violent threat. Connor Terrell is being held in the Orange County Jail. He's charged with communicating threats of mass violence. Officers say they learned about the threat made in a social media post on Friday. Investigators no longer believe there are credible threats to Zebulon schools, but say students and staff can expect to see an increased law enforcement presence. The city of Durham expects to launch shot spotter technology in the next two months as police look to employ new tools to crack down on gun violence. But there are some who question whether shot spotter is worth the hype and money. As CBS 17's Haley Fixler reports, a community meeting got a little heated. I'm the boots on policy. Haley Fixler, CBS 17 News. The city will host three more community meetings where people will be able to ask questions directly about shot spotter prior to its launch. Durham's plans to launch ShotSpotter have been delayed a couple of times despite months and months of planning. Initially, it was supposed to go live in early September, but then the start date was pushed back by a few weeks. In late August, the city announced the program would go live in November due to circumstances outside of their control. Sunday marks 21 years since terrorists launched a deadly a series of coordinated attacks against the U.S. Of course, thousands were killed in New York, Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania on September 11, 2001. A man who moved to North Carolina after surviving the attacks is sharing his story of escaping the Twin Towers after they were hit by hijacked planes. They knew. They News. Hard to believe it's been 21 years. More than 120 people were killed when a third hijacked plane crashed into the Pentagon in Washington. More than 40 others died when United Flight 93 crashed in Pennsylvania. This happened after passengers tried to retake control of the airplane. Tens of thousands of responders continue dealing with chronic health issues after their exposure to toxic dust and debris more than two decades after the September 11th terror attacks. Now researchers are looking at other long-term impacts on these patients, including asthma, cancer, PTSD, and even COVID-19. Now that we've been able to follow these patients for as long as a year, we find about 15% of our patients continue to have problems with long COVID. The president of the New York Uniform Fire Officers Association says his organization has lost more than 30 members in the past year from 9-11 related illnesses. It's estimated that more than 80,000 responders are enrolled in World Trade Center health programs. The investigation continues into a deadly weekend shooting at Cumberland County. Deputies say two men were found shot just after 6.30 on Spike World Drive Friday night. Both were taken to Cape Fear Valley Medical Center but only one of the victims survived. At last check, that person was in serious condition. Deputies have not released any names, but say the shooting was not random. And Raleigh police say a woman has serious injuries after being hit by a car overnight. It happened just after 9 o'clock, just north of, of Lewisburg Road. Several northbound lanes were closed for nearly two hours as police worked to investigate the incident. The woman was taken to the hospital, but there is no word on her condition. CBS 17 is your local election headquarters. The state Republican Party and the Republican National Committee are suing the state board of elections. The organizations, along with the Clay County GOP chairwoman, are trying to block the panel from extending the fall absentee ballot receipt deadline because of the holiday. Under state law, county elections offices must receive civilian absentee ballots by the third day after election day, either in person or in the mail if the ballot was postmarked by election day. You can't make this stuff up. That is the reaction from the sheriff of Robinson County after his deputies arrested a man who recently graduated from a drug rehab program. Deputies say they received a complaint that people who were seeking treatment were targeted by this man on your screen, Donald Suggs. Now, according to investigators, the 51 year old was not only a graduate, but worked at the center as a member of the staff. He was arrested after a traffic stop that deputies say led to the seizure of cocaine and drug paraphernalia. Suggs faces multiple drug charges. He's being held on $100,000 bond. 
Now, deputies also arrested Kelsey Hunt on similar charges during that traffic stop. The 28-year-old is being held on $100,000 bond as well. And Sheriff Bernice Wilkins released a statement about Suggs on Facebook saying, quote, to think we've been over backwards to assist a repeated convicted felon with his drug addiction, only to watch him take advantage of the situation. He goes on to say to conduct drug sales within a rehab center. It's quite disturbing. It has been two months since the Northern Wake Senior Center had to close because of significant damage from severe weather. As I found out, as they continue to operate as a center without walls, both the town of Wake Forest and the community have stepped up to help. The doors remain closed here at the Northern Wake Senior Center in Wake Forest. And we're now on eight locations. All of the population, I think, its needs are being met. But the work continues. Back in July, lightning hit the facility. Fortunately, no one was inside. Firefighters say there was damage to the roof and several rooms. The fire department credits the fire sprinklers for keeping the fire from spreading. Jenny Griggs, the program director for the Northern and Eastern Wake Senior Center, says... They haven't missed a beat. And most of the uh, volunteers and the folks that have volunteered their facilities are private um, citizens of Wake Forest. And then the town of Wake Forest has donated a lot of their um, parks and rec facilities for us to use. Resources for Seniors Incorporated, the organization that provides the programming here at the Northern Wake Senior Center, says staff members are also fielding questions from people and getting them hooked up with programs being offered at the different locations. And they are continuing to provide things like meals and classes in art, writing, and dancing. I am almost 70 years old. I'm retired. Not. <laughs> this is this is what they call with the aging population my encore and I hope it's my honor to be able to make the aging population part of it. There's no lack of passion and no lack of generosity from the community. Next week, there will be a benefit concert to help with expenses. We have a group, another organization called the Friends of Northern Wake Senior Center. They have formed their own 501C, and they basically provide funding for items and teachers and things like that that we don't have funding for. Now, that benefit concert will happen next Sunday, September 18th at the Forks Cafeteria in Wake Forest from 3.30 to 5 p.m. Now, as far as, as far as the facility, I'm told some repairs have started. More construction is on the way, and they hope to reopen at the beginning of next year. I know people will be looking forward to that, but they seem to have made do pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the rain. Okay, okay. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain. <laughs> Today you might have a right to complain, right? <laughs> I mean, like, if you complained about today, you weren't alone. Let's just say that. But the rain that we were dealing with earlier is starting to clear away. A music festival and college football are just some of the reasons crowds are flocking to downtown Raleigh tonight. Yeah, CBS 17's Mariah Ellis is live in downtown Raleigh. And Mariah, there's a lot of rain out there today. The big question, did it have an impact? Yes, if you happen to... All right, thanks, Mariah. Well, the Queen Elizabeth's name, her initials, and image are woven into the fabric of daily life in Britain and across the Commonwealth. As Elise Preston reports, her death is prompting royal change on iconic state symbols of her 70-year reign. Now, local news that matters. This is CBS 17 News. A Chatham County educator is fired after being arrested on disturbing charges involving a student. Yeah, that tops our three things to know tonight. The Chatham County Sheriff's Office confirms Jasmine Murphy, right here on your screen, was arrested a week ago. Charges include attempted sexual and indecent liberties with a student, cyber stalking, and extortion. The 27-year-old worked as a teacher at Northwood High School. She is scheduled to appear before a judge in Chatham County District Court on Monday. No arrests in connection with a shooting that killed one man and sent another to the hospital with serious injuries. Cumberland County deputies tell us they found the men shot on Spike Rail Drive about 6.30 Friday night. Both were taken to the hospital where one died. Deputies believe the victims knew who shot them, saying this was not a random crime. And England remains in state of mourning in the days after Queen Elizabeth II's death. She will lie in state starting Wednesday in Westminster Hall. A state funeral will be held on September 19th at Westminster Abbey. Today, her son, Charles, King Charles III, was formally proclaimed sovereign of the monarchy of Great Britain in a ceremony at St. James Place.
And of course, we know we've had to deal with quite a bit of rain today, but now things are starting to calm down, at least for most of us. We have some showers near I-95, 